Welcome to my lecture online. Oh, I have the hiccups. <laughs> All right, let's try again. Welcome to my lecture online. The last bit of information that we get in Word 3 of subframe 1 is the IODC. But we only get part of that message in Word 3, only two bits, the most significant bits, the MSBs. And the next eight bits of that message can be found in Word 8 of subframe 1. Now, the 10 bits combined give you a particular number that is associated with a data set coming from that particular SV. Now, we use new data sets with the information about the, with, uh, the information of the SV every two or four hours or so because it becomes outdated. And so you want to use the new data set. And all those data sets are transmitted to the SVs ahead of time. Now, obviously, every 24 hours or so, you would like to send a new set, <gasps> excuse me, so that the data is, is fresh and the data is the most accurate you can get. But in the case that it cannot be updated, we'll continue to send data from the SV down to the receivers, but it'll become more and more aged, and so you don't have to update it quite as often. So you need to let the receivers know which data set they're using. And so there's a numbering system. And this is where the title of that information, the IODC, which stands for the Issue of Data Clock. The word clock is kind of mis misgiving, so to speak, because then you're expecting some sort of time. But it's not time at all. It is actually the number and it's numbered, so the messages are numbered, and you use the first one, then the second one, then the third one, and so forth. And that information is contained in the IODC. So let me explain. So we have a 10-bit piece of instruction. The first two bits, the most significant bits, are contained within Word 3, and notice they're bit 23 and 24 of Word 3 in subframe 1. The next eight bits, the least significant bits, they're contained in Word 8, and they are the first eight bits of that word. Now it turns out that those eight bits also account for the IODE, which is the issue of data ephemeris. I guess I should put parentheses here. And so that gives you some information about the ephemeris, but the issue of data clock, that is the additional two bits that you'll find in Word 3. Now, notice here that on day one, you want to refresh every two hours. So for day one, there will be 12 different data sets and they are going to be numbered so that the data set number is essentially given to you via the IODC. Notice that the restriction are that it can be anywhere from 0 to 1023 because that's the range you get for four bits, but you cannot include numbers 240 to 255 which are reserved for a special set of the messages. Notice then for the next 14 days from 2 to 14, which is essentially just 13 day span, you're now going to have a transmission interval of 4 hours. So you're going to renew every 4 hours instead of every 2 hours. And that means that you're now going to give numbers again from 0 to 1, 1023, but again not 240 and 255. Up here I kind of made a table that shows that we need 12 numbers reserved for day one because you can have 12 different data sets. And from day two to day 14, you can have 78 different data sets, one for every four hours for a period of 13 days. Then for the next two days from 15 to 16, notice that now you have messages every six hours. That means four per day for two days. That gives you eight intervals. And from 17 to 20, now you're going to have a new message every 12 hours. And so for four days, 12 hours, that's again eight intervals. Notice that the restriction on the numbers are as follows. For the 15 to 16 day, when you have six, uh, six hour intervals, so that would be a total of eight intervals, use the numbers 240 to 247. So when the IODC is equivalent to a number between 240 and 247, you're indicating to the receiver that you're now in day 15, 16, and that the transmission interval is now uh, six hours per data set. Also notice here we have the curve fit hours, which means if you want to curve fit beyond the given data set, you can go on for another two hours by curve fitting the information for an additional two hours. Notice all the curve fit hours are two hours more than the, tra than the transmission interval of the particular SV data. So that means with doing extrapolation or curve fitting, you can add another two hours of usefulness out of the data before you jump to the next set in case we have to. 
So that from 17 to 20, notice we have 12 hour intervals. The numbers are there from 248 to 255 and number 496. I'm not quite sure where that number 496 is because you do indeed have eight intervals available from 248 to 255. Then from 21 to 27 days, now you have a new data set every 24 hours, a period of, uh, let's see, that's uh, six days, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days, seven intervals. So seven intervals means you have numbers from 497 to 503. And then finally, from 28 to 41 days, you now have a new message set every 48 hours. So it really becomes age if you have to go that many days before you're getting re, uh, retransmitted data to the satellites then notice you use numbers 504 to 510 and then finally for 42 to 59 days 72 hours every three, three days there is transmission we need six intervals and they give you the numbers 511 and 752 to 756 to utilize for that so when the IODC number matches one of those you know what transmission interval you're using and therefore you know how aged the data is and then you know how to curve fit it to how many hours out you can curve fit it. So it's simply telling you what data set you're using uh, from, the, uh, from the satellite. And notice that hopefully you only need to stay in day one. But notice that if you get new data every single time, you cannot use the same IODC number within a seven day span. So you cannot reuse a number you've already used in the last seven days. You have to use a new number. So it is possible that you get 12 intervals per day for a total of seven days, but each time you have to use a new number rather than reuse a number. You don't get to reset back to zero just because you get a new data set every day. Uh, you need to then go to a different IODC number. So it's simply an indication of which data set you're using and depending upon what numbers you get, you know that you're either getting a new one every two hours, every four hours, or every six, 12, or 24 hours indicated by the IODC number you're receiving from the SV. And that is how it's done.